It's the morning star drive on 17.8 You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind I'm burning with desire and the passion Nobody can stop me when I'm like this I got my head in the zone, you know I'm on the morning star drive, you know Hey guys, how's it going? It is Monday, July 26th and this is the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. We're on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe, follow us on SoundCloud, and support us on Patreon. So what is going on today? On this wonderful Monday, we have some coronavirus updates, current news we missed over the weekend from around the world, and of course, the Sunday sermon, the message about take action boldly and wisely without missing the opportunity God and the Holy Spirit gave to you. All right, guys. Uh, how was your weekend? How was your weekend? I'm sure you guys uh, enjoyed it. I enjoyed my weekend a lot. Um, now that I'm going into this new direction for the YouTube channel, it's very interesting because I'm looking into like new topics to talk about. So especially when it comes to doing a more spiritual channel, I want to be able to answer those questions that like people or newcomers newcomers might have. So of course, you know, questions like, uh, why did God make people go to war? Or you know, why, you know, why can't why Christians think you can't be perfect? Or did Jesus have to go to the cross? Like these types of things here. So I will answer those types of questions so that you guys can go out and uh, share this with newcomers that might want to know these questions also. All right. So that is going to be starting not from this week. This week's going to be uh, my last vlog. Okay, so it'll be my last vlog, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy this one too. Just kind of a big thank you to everyone for all the support, prayers, and donations that they gave out. And uh, also, what else did it, What else is it? Oh, yeah, it's going to be the last one there. So it's a big thank you and uh, kind of the new direction of where I'm going. And then, of course, we're going to go into the new direction from the week after. And I believe we're going to do it every Thursdays instead of Tuesdays, I think. Okay, uh, also, hey, guys, it's... Um, it's a 70 day prayer condition, obviously, and it is the 26th, which means, uh, what, how many, what day are we on, on the 26th? That's going to be the, no, that's going to be day 59, right? Isn't it day 56? Day, day 56, which means we have, we have two weeks left. Is it right? Day 56. Yeah, two weeks left for the prayer condition. So I hope that uh, all of us can just really finish strong these last two weeks. So I hope that we can do all this together on the Morning Star Drive. Uh, very thankful, grateful everyone joining us once again. Uh, slowly, the numbers are going up for the Morning Star Drive. So super happy about this. Um, so, you know, guys, keep liking, commenting below. I want to hear how you guys are doing. Make your requests, questions, and what you guys are thinking about. Uh, also, um, I, like I said, the vlog is tomorrow and also tonight. Tonight is going to be another Monday Patreon. It's the intro section, section one to season two of the Monday night Zoom Bible studies. Uh, we've had anywhere from about 130 to 150 people joining every Mondays. Uh, I believe um, tonight we're going to be doing either Elijah and the Ravens or Peter and the Fish, one of the two. Uh, also yesterday, Sunday edition, we interviewed Rose Lederman from Houston, Texas. Really fun interview, so go ahead and check that one out. She's really, uh, she's got... You know, she's good storyteller. So when you listen to this, you'll really enjoy it. So great moving interview. Really thankful that she uh, uh, was able to share her life with us. So make sure to catch that Sunday edition for this week. And big shout outs um, to Velix and Queen in Malaysia. Bridget in Taiwan for supporting us on Patreon. Thank you for believing and supporting this channel. Uh, and if you want to support us too, then check out the Patreon link in the description. If you're on SoundCloud, click the blue button on the homepage. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that you can support the Morning Star Drive at just three bucks a month. And at the moment, we have lecture training videos, Monday night Bible studies. Uh, we have question and answer sessions. We have a bunch of these different things, so go ahead and check that one out, all right? And also, Monday open Bible study uh, they, 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 this Monday open Zoom Bible study will be on Patreon starting uh, tomorrow. Not starting, well, it'll be on tomorrow from today's. Tonight's will be on tomorrow morning, okay? So let's move on to today's featured artist of the day. Today's featured artist on this awesome Monday is Akuma Chunk from Japan, and this song is called Hero Second. I'm not sure why it's called Hero Second, but maybe it's the second version of it. Uh, the second song is from J Root of the Paper Music Associates in Korea, and this is one of my favorite drinks to start the week on. It is Latte. That's the name of the song. And last but not least, we have Renee live from Taiwan uh, with a cover from GEM. This song is called Still a Girl. All right, guys, as we're moving forward to the last two weeks of the 70-day prayer condition, let's make sure to put in a little prayer for all our member artists from around the world. Yeah! We just gonna break it up, break it up. We just gonna break it up. Hey, yeah! Yeah, I don't see what I need, I don't 
その場所から作り上げるタッチ一か八の長距離直面しても貫き通す言葉のタッチ努力は表に見やしない真似事なんて通じやしない与えられたままじゃ意味がない磨いた分だけ聞いてたまえどうせ生きるなら足跡残したい生き方したい憧れだってゴールドメダル準備ができたらゴールを狙う魂にふわついてんのか熱くなってんのか踏み出す
말야 Wow 힘내지만 너 화면이 쌓여 신문은 닮은 생고 밤을 새봐도 쌓이는 problem 빙빙 도는 내몸뻥 뚫린 내혼몇 번을 해너 봐야 했어 다짐해 이게 마지막 노 한나의 라떼 
And there you go. That was Renee Lai from Taiwan with a cover from GEM. That song is called Still a Girl. Uh, before that, J Root from PMA in Korea. And that song is Latte, my favorite drink of all time. And then, of course, Kuba Chung from Japan with Hero Second. All right, guys, let's get into some news going on around the world, starting out with coronavirus updates. In the world, 194.4 million cases, 4.1 million deaths at a 2.14% mortality rate. Top five countries going by we're going to talk about not only just the daily infection rates but also the daily death rates on top once again is indonesia forty-five thousand cases in a single day and they are number one in the world of deaths in a day 1415 deaths per day that was that was yesterday okay so uh india second with forty thousand cases with only 542 deaths Brazil, 38,000 cases, 1,080 deaths. The U.S. with 36,000 cases, 151 deaths in a day. And then the U.K., 31,000 cases and only 86 deaths on in that 24-hour span. Uh, over here in Southeast Asia, top three countries, we have Indonesia, of course, on top, 45,000 cases in a day with 14, 1,415 deaths in a day. Malaysia jumps to second with 15,000 cases, guys. 184 deaths in a day. I didn't know that many people were dying here in Malaysia. And then Thailand, 14,000 cases, 119 deaths per day. So that is what's going on when it comes to um, these daily infection rates and the daily death rates. So let's get into the top three news going on around the world. We'll start off with uh, India. So this India monsoon season right now and already 110 dead after heavy rainfall in Maharashtra. Now, at least 110 people have been killed in landslides and flooding triggered by heavy rains in the western Indian state of Maharashtra. And the rains overwhelmed hundreds of villages, sweeping away houses and leaving residents stranded. Rescue crews have been racing to evacuate survivors, but many people are feared missing. The Indian military has been helping the efforts, which have been hampered by difficult, uh, difficult conditions, and the state has recorded its heaviest spell of July rain for decades. Many factors contribute to flooding, but experts say climate change caused by global warming makes extreme rainfall more likely. Now, on Friday, Indian officials said most of the deaths had been caused by landslides and flooding in two districts. A landslide flattened the small village of Tali, uh, southeast of India's financial capital, Mumbai. An official told Reuters news agency at least 42 people had died there. Now, the Indian Navy and, and disaster authorities have been sent to help rescue operations in coastal areas. And one coastal district has been completely cut off after bridges and mobile towers in the area collapsed. Authorities have asked stranded residents to go to rooftops so rescuers in helicopters can spot them. Now, in Mumbai... Two people died and 10, 10 others were injured after a residential building collapsed on Friday. Train services have been suspended and the city's low-lying areas have turned into flood zones. Weather experts say heavy rains will continue to lash the city over the next few days. Uh, heavy rains in Mumbai is actually not very uncommon. Right, So the city experiences flooding every year during the monsoon season, but the intensity of the rains has increased in recent times, and thousands of people migrate to the city every day in search of jobs, and this fuels rapid and often unregulated construction, forcing many to live in poor quality buildings. Uh, so this is not just the first flood. Just last week, end of last week, we also talked about the floods in China, and last week, also the beginning week, there was floods in Germany. So uh, it looks pretty rampant, and uh, it, it's, it's getting pretty serious right now. Uh, second on the news is... Um, Thousands to protest and global uh, amid global anger against COVID restrictions. So people take to the streets in Australia, France, Italy, and the UK protesting against lockdowns and vaccine pass schemes. So tens of thousands of people across several countries, including France and Italy, have protested against anti-COVID measures with the French police using tear gas and water cannons to disperse protesters in the capital, Paris. Now, in France, an estimated 160,000 people took to the streets in nationwide protests against uh, President Emmanuel Macron's health pass that will drastically curtail access to restaurants and public spaces for unvaccinated people. So the people were screaming and chanting, freedom, freedom. Uh, these are demonstrators in France carrying placards denouncing Macron tyrant. So big pharma shackles freedom or saying no to the pass of shame. Now, a similar scheme uh, called Green Pass has sparked angry demonstrations across Italy. People in Rome, Naples, and Turin chanted freedom and down with the dictatorship over plans for the so-called Green Pass. Now, the certificate will be needed from early next month to eat in restaurants and visit cinemas, among other indoor activities. And many people gathered without wearing masks, but the turnout was lower than expected. Now, thousands of people have also protested in London against what they describe as an erosion of their civil liberties. And demonstrators say the UK government track and trade 
Trace app is limiting their movements with more than 600,000 told to isolate, a uh, self-isolate in one week alone this month. The protests come a week after most coronavirus restrictions in England were lifted. Now, earlier, uh, dozens of protesters were arrested after an unauthorized march in Sydney, Australia's largest city. Organizers had dubbed the protest a freedom rally. Now, attendees carried signs and banners reading, Wake Up Australia and Drain the Swamp. Um, there's Heidi Larson, who's a professor of anthropology, risk and decision science at the Department of Infectious Disease Epidemiology at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, told uh, the news that the health pass makes a lot of sense. And last weekend, more than 100,000 people protested across France against the measures. Separately, in Indonesia and the UK, governments have pressed ahead with the easing of restrictions even in the face of surging infections. Now, meanwhile, about 5,000 people demonstrated in Athens, Right in Greece, carrying placards uh, touting slogans such as "Don't touch our children," according to an AFP journalist at the scene. And in Sydney, demonstrators uh, pelted officers with pot plants and bottles of water as they defied a month-long stay-at-home order. A day after authorities suggested the restrictions could remain in place until October. Right, so that is a demonstration going on around the world. It's quite interesting. It's usually it's supposed to be happening in America first when it comes to freedom, but it looks like it's happening other places. Uh, last but not least, third on the the big big news for today, um, the Delta variant spreads globally as cases soar. Now, the Delta variant of the coronavirus has now been detected in 124 territories worldwide. This is what the WHO has said. And it's expected to become the dominant variant globally in the coming months, with the WHO predicting that there could be more than 200 million confirmed cases within a matter of weeks. Now, infections are rising particularly in Europe and the Western Pacific region. Some Western countries have started to ease restrictions as death rates have dropped, but those without access to vaccines or with a slower vaccine rollout are facing a deadlier threat. Now, with more than 1,300 deaths in a day, Indonesia, well, today they're 1,400, right, has become Asia's new COVID epicenter. Hundreds of people have died in self-isolation, possibly because they could not get immediate treatment or were turned away by overwhelmed hospitals. Um... Uh, firefighters in the capital city of Jakarta sees the worsening crisis firsthand, and uh, their you know their tasks are basically to pick up dead bodies from homes before finally delivering them for burial. Uh, before the latest spike in cases, um, these people going these volunteers going around picking up dead bodies, um, they're arranging two or three funerals a day, and now he says it's up to twenty four a day. Right. And that's more than uh, these these volunteers can handle. So the bodies need to wait. So the country is recording more than 50,000 new daily cases and the government is keeping emergency restrictions until at least the end of this week. And it's likely to extend the measures on Monday. So this this Delta variant, guys, is new, highly transmissible. First detected in India, continues to ravage the country. Indonesia is racing to vaccine its people from 208 million people eligible for vaccines around only around 16 million have received both doses. Right. Uh, in Tunisia, in uh, Tunisia and Africa, pizza is offered for people who uh, register for vaccines. And Tunisia is now witnessing the most devastating impact of COVID since the global pandemic took hold. It's not known whether most of the new infections are the Delta variant specifically, but case numbers grew after its known arrival there. Hospitals across the country are completely overwhelmed with some medics filmed crying over a shortage of oxygen concentrators uh, as they are forced to decide who lives and who dies, right? So, you know, they're, they're not only giving out uh, pizza, they're also giving out like some telecom companies are giving uh, offering a free gigabyte of free Internet for those who follow the mobile text prompt to register for a vaccine. Uh, at the moment, there's only less than 8% of the population that's fully jabbed. So that's why uh, they're having even more uh, difficulties with it. Mexico is facing a third wave of the pandemic. The number of infections has risen to more than 15,000 a day, reaching the peak we saw at the beginning of the year. And authorities are concerned about the advance of the Delta variant, which is in, in the capital city, uh, Me Mexico City, already accounts for over 60% of the cases. And the government admitted that the spread of this variant in Mexico and the U.S. is the reason they have extended the closure of the land border between the two countries of, to non-essential travel now most of those affected in mexico are young and unvaccinated and only one in four over 18 years old in the country are fully vaccinated so uh that's 25 percent. so it's a very small amount um but the hospital beds there's 65 percent of the beds are available which means the hospitals don't show uh, a collapse right and it's not like the worst moment for the pandemic for them there so this 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 delta variant's going everywhere so it's something that we do have to keep a close eye on uh, and if you look at the numbers that we showed you right before this for the coronavirus uh, numbers if you see the top 5 countries it's the countries where 
uh, the vaccines are are you know are are done really well and quickly. There, that's where the fewest deaths are. That's why even though the U.S. and the U.K. have a lot of uh, they have a lot of daily infections, their death rate is really low compared to uh, the other countries like Indonesia. Uh, Indonesia is ten times greater than the U.S. Uh, and I think 20, even 20 times greater than the UK. So you can see that there is a big difference when the vaccinations are there, okay? So uh, that is the, the news, the top three news for today. So that means let's get into some sports and we're gonna talk a little bit about the Olympics. In the Olympics, what kind of news we have? Well, in women's soccer, okay, I'm, I'm gonna wanna report something really happy. Uh, Canada defeated Chile two to one. So that makes me really, really happy. Sweden also goes two and oh as they defeat, uh, defeat Australia women's team 4-2. to two. Uh, I know that the U.S. beat New Zealand 6-1. to one. And if we look at the medal tracker right now, at this moment, uh, it's the U.S. on top with seven medals, China with six, and then Japan with four. Um, if there's any updates on medals, the very, very first medal uh, given was to China as um, they won the gold medal for the 10-meter air rifle. Uh, Japan won their first gold just the other day from Naohisa Takato, and he wins judo, I believe, for the 46 or the 48-kilogram division. And I know that Korea won gold for the mixed archery. But right now, so far, uh, the U.S. is on top with seven. Uh, China was six, and then only, not only, but four for uh, Japan. So let's see how the medal counts go uh, here in the future, okay? So that means we're uh, done with the news for today, which means we're going to get into uh, the golden times, a little bit more spiritual, right? Now that we got all that news out of the way, uh, we're, we're going to spend some time just preparing our hearts uh, for the word study. Uh, so we're going to start with some praise, three songs today. Uh, a Wedding Banquet of Love. And then my beloved is like the sun. And then we'll end it off with only this remains. All right, guys. So as one body of the Morning Star Drive, let's spend this time together giving glory, honor, and praise to the Holy Trinity. Now the time's come, time for us all to sing, sing the new songs, everyone come and dance. Wave your arms, move your legs now, shake your head all around, move and shake your whole body. Let's sing the new songs of this new history, let's go, let's all run. Praise and glory We offer only to heaven Everyone rise, come on Move your body, feel the music Dance as one Just wave both of your hands Shuffle your feet While matching the beat and singing with happiness Full of joy, God and the Spirit watch They can help but laugh Dancing along, dancing with them We are strengthened for us of a new story Let's make this wedding banquet for a thousand years as we fulfill God's perfect world of love We'll make it awesome We'll run without regrets As our souls and spirits live as owners Forever up in heaven That great eternal world while loving God forever, loving the Holy Spirit now and always We will live with the Lord forever Let's make this wedding banquet 
for a thousand years as we fulfill God's perfect world of love will make it awesome We'll run without regrets as our souls and spirits live as owners Forever up in heaven That great eternal world One loving God forever Loving the Holy Spirit now and always We will live with the Lord forever Forever Jump, 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 jump Kung chow, 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 chow Kung chow, 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 chow Jump, 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 jump Kung chow, 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 chow Kung chow, 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 chow Jump, 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 jump Kung chow, 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 chow Kung chow, 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 chow Kung chow, 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 chow Jump, 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 jump Jump, 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 jump Kung chow, 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 chow Kung chow, 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 chow
What a great song. This is a song that uh, Pastor Joan sang too. That's uh, the original in Korean. Great song, Only This Remains. A confession uh, she has 
uh, to the Lord. Uh, before that was My Beloved is Like the Sun, and of course, Wedding Banquet of Love. All right, guys, so we're going to get into a time of some word study for this week's Sunday message. And the Sunday message is about take action boldly and wisely without missing the opportunity that God and the Holy Spirit have given you. Okay, so take action. And if you, if you look at how uh, Sunsi preached this week, everything was just about opportunity. Uh, I don't think he went off topic once. He just preached it, right? He preached opportunity, chance, right? And of course, you know, now uh, we have to think about this. We have two weeks left in the seven-day prayer condition. And originally when Sunsim talked about it, what did he say? He said that this is a time where the king is asking you, what do you want? And this is your golden opportunity of what do you want, right? He wants to listen to you and resolve your problems. We have 14 days left, guys. And in these 14 days, this is the golden opportunity where many things will be resolved during this time, even more than outside of this. It's a special moment. It's almost like having that hall pass, you know? When you're in school, you have that pass that allows you be out to be out in the hallways because you have a reason to be there, right? So this is a, such an important time. I hope that everyone just really spends this last 14 days really, really well, praying deeply about the things. And of course, you know, we learned today the secret of, of the uh, when God and the Holy Spirit answer you the best, right? And of course, we know what that is. So uh, let's take a look at first at the beginning. I like how Sun asks the Holy Spirit the definition. And I think that's really important that he's not thinking about it just looking at a dictionary, but he's asking what, what none of us can really ask is, what does it mean? Like opportunity. And the answer that the Holy Spirit gave was he, she gave two. Number one was opportunity means time. Okay? So that makes sense to us. Like, yeah, of course, opportunity is the time, right? But then, then next is God is the time. God is time. The Holy Spirit is time. And the Holy Son is time. So opportunity, and then the next definition is opportunity also means chance. Okay, so it's almost like we, we have the word like resurrection or rapture. Rapture means love. Rapture means change. Rapture means transformation. We see there's a bunch of different, um, different types of examples we can use for the word opportunity. And God is time. It's God. It's the Holy Trinity, right? So it's, that's what the opportunity is. It also means time, but God means time, Holy Spirit, Holy Son. And then it also means chance. Okay, so we kind of get a little bit more deeper into what does it mean God is time? Okay. And when he didn't go really, really deep into it, but it was really interesting when he said, God is time. So since God is working through the Lord, right? Then whenever the Lord moves, that is the opportunity. And this is when you have to move too. So we're looking at this like, oh, what does that mean? But if you think about this week's message, like all the different things is when the Lord is evangelizing, he's saying to evangelize, we're all evangelizing together with him. And that's the opportunity because through the Lord, God is teaching us what time it is right now. When something goes to prune, when something goes to teach, to manage, to whatever it is, and we always hear about what the Lord is doing. And when we hear, ah, oh, God is doing this through the Lord, right? Can you imagine 2,000 years ago, whenever, wherever Jesus went, that's what God was doing at that time. That was the opportunity. So we have to move together with the Lord. And it obviously, you know, physically too, those who are next to the Lord should be moving together with Him. But spiritually also, every week we're getting the Sunday message so God can teach us directly, this is how we need to move this week. And this is what you call grabbing the opportunity. We will grab the opportunity this week when we uh, realize that God is giving us opportunity at this time, right? So God is time, which means the Lord is the opportunity because God is working through him, right? That's, so that's, it's, when you think about it, it's really deep when you think about it that way. Uh, so one thing that was told to all of us is we really need to study and research about opportunity. Like what does that mean, right? Understanding how it comes, how it happens. And opportunity is when, uh, opportunity is basically the chance to get what you wanted or wished for when it comes true, right? And the thing is, if we don't learn or study about opportunity, we have no idea when it comes. So one of the things, uh, one of the things that was talked about in the message is um, the opportunity is some. It feels like coincidence, right? It does. Opportunity feels like coincidence, and we have to be those that understand is uh, the opportunity 
Uh, it feels like a coincidence, meaning we don't know when the opportunity is coming. It's not like it's going to be like, like uh, what, what's that word? It's not like it's something that's like beep, 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 opportunity is coming, opportunity is coming. This is what we have to research it, right? You have to research it because you don't know when it's going to come. And people don't even know when the opportunity is right in front of them. And that's why you need to study and learn it. This week, there's going to be opportunities. And some of them are going to succeed and some are going to fail because some of them are real opportunities and some aren't. And it's a matter of, can you see it? Did you study it and research it enough? And one of the good examples he gave was he's talked about signs. Uh, signs are like, um, oh yeah, he said before an earthquake, before an earthquake, you have like snakes and, and what, what else did he say that were like snakes and other animals that run away and you know, what earthquake is coming. And he says in the same way, there's signs for an opportunity. And we have to realize, understand what that means is there is a sign for when the opportunity comes, but if we don't study and understand it, we're not going to know that, oh my gosh, ah, this is the opportunity that God was giving, giving me, right? And we have to be those uh, that have to study and research the opportunity. Think about how it happens, how it comes. Look at the other opportunities in your life. Look at other people's opportunities and you'll see that there are signs that come before it. And then we'll be able to take up the sign, uh, take up the opportunities that God has given to us, right? So we have to be those that really catch it properly. He says, you know, uh, catching uh, opportunity, grabbing opportunity is like catching a fish. You got to grab by the head, not by the tail. The head is the alpha, the tail is the omega. So don't grab the opportunity uh, if you don't grab it by the head, it's like not grabbing it at the beginning and later you regret. Now, this is where something, something else, well, another part I thought was interesting was there is still a time for redemption. So even if you miss the opportunity, there is a time for redemption. However, that's at the end, which means you'll still be like, man, it's better to do it at the beginning. You could have gained so much more by taking it at the beginning and not suffering so much, right? And that's why we have to do it with the head first, right? And he said, and then he kind of just ties in this amazing concept of animals and people. We always go ahead first, not tail first, right? And and that, what does that mean? It means our thoughts go before our body. We have to grab the thoughts first before anything else. So I, I, I thought that was really powerful too. Uh, and of course, you know, he goes into um, age and how getting it done at SS is very important. So I know that there's a, for a lot of us here, I know that the majority of the crowd that listens to the, to the, these Morning Star Drive podcasts are not SS. They're, you know, that we're more in our 20s to 40s, I believe, I think, right? And when we listen to this, you know, we have to understand is how important that young age was for us. We take a look at ourselves too by looking at our young age, but it also sh shows us how much we need to help and shape these new SS, these young people. And I, I like the parable he used of a bonsai tree is a bonsai tree can be shaped in its youth, can be controlled in its youth. But when you're, when the bonsai gets older, you can only bend the, the, the branches a bit, but if you do it too much, it breaks, right? But if it's young, you can even shape the branches into a circle. So the best time to control yourself is when you're at the high school age, right? And it's difficult when you're old, right? And uh, the example was Jesus too. Jesus, uh, it says he was 12 years old, but of course in Korean age, he would be either 13 or 14, which would be in his teens. And that is the best time that Jesus was there talking to the biblical scholars and just really asking these amazing questions that everyone is shocked. Uh, but the one thing I do think is really, really good, and I think that's something that we have to think to ourselves is... Uh, it's about controlling yourself. It's not having someone else to control you, right? That's like, that means you're not even control of yourself. You need to control yourself and that is the best when you can control yourself. This is when the Holy Spirit works with you. The Holy Spirit helps you. This is a time we can do our best, right? So if anything, the greatest time to do it is in your teens to make yourself and it's easier to control, even though it may seem hard for a lot of SS, the teens are the best years for this. And if you can, you know, like one, one of the great things that he told us is like, hey, if you don't want your parents to nag, control yourself. Clean your room. Control yourself and clean the room. Control yourself and wash the dishes. Control yourself and clean the things or do the chores you're supposed to do, right? And if you could do it like this well in your teens, then in your 20s, it become easy because all it is is maintenance. There's no like heavy bending and breaking, right? It's just that uh, it's much easier in your 20s and all we're doing is ma just maintenance, moving a little bit here and then moving a little bit there, right? So... Uh, and then when he talked about age, I like this point too, is, uh, if you have 10 different people, all different age groups, uh, and someone's asked to drive, it doesn't go to the person who's oldest. It goes to the person that knows how to drive. It's about ability regardless of age, right? So he says, don't complain about not having a mission. You need to gain the ability, 
right? I know a lot of people, you know, in, when I was growing uh, in Providence, I know a lot of people were complaining about missions. How come I don't have a mission? How come I don't have a mission? How come you didn't give me a title? And the answer is, right, it's, it's about the ability to do it. So what's the point of, you know, being a pastor if you don't have the ability to be a pastor? What's the point of being a lecturer if you don't have the ability to be a lecturer? What's the point of being a manager if you don't have the ability to be a manager, right? And it's, it's about the ability more than anything else. And I think we have two sides to it. On one side is someone has the ability, but we won't give them the mission because they're too young, but they have the ability, right? So that's the wrong thing we do. And on the flip side is we give people missions because they're older, but they don't have the ability, right? And that's another wrong thing that we're doing. So we have to understand is we have to be able to see things properly where we give to people according to uh, their abilities, right? Uh, ooh, this is the one I liked. And it, it reminded me of a couple of verses, like uh, how does God give opportunity? And God gives opportunity a little bit at a time, not all at once. But he says, if I'm gonna give, if God's going to give you a cup, he'll give you the dish for the cup first, right? It's like, oh, that's weird. So it's like, that's the sign. You get that knowing that something else is coming, right? So it's kind of that, that, that simple principle in the Bible is whatever you can do well with the little things, God will give you greater things. So whatever God gives you is a precursor to something greater. So all the things that we have right now is all a precursor to a greater thing. And I hope that's something that we can really understand, uh, uh, re understand well, right? It's a precursor for a greater thing. You know, there are uh, signs for everything. And I hope that this week we can catch those signs. And we can, you know, just really catch those opportunities. Oh, you know, there's, there's one last part that I really thought that was good was um, sometimes people are able to make their opportunity. And I thought that was really interesting. If you have the skill, you can make opportunities, right? So, for instance, if you have the skill to, um, what would be a good skill? Yeah, imagine you have the skill to evangelize. What's going to happen? You can make your opportunity. Right? You can just say, hey, I'm going to move to this country or I'm gonna, I, I want to move to a new country. Does anyone want me to go there? But imagine you're like a, the master evangelist. If you're a master evangelist, you know how many countries would be like, no, come to our church. Oh, come to our church, whatever it is, right? Then what happens is we understand there is like, oh, okay, that's what it is, right? So what we need to understand is we have to make the opportunity. If you have the skill, you can make it. And it's kind of the example he gave was those crystal balls, which are it was ridiculous, amazing. Remember that, remember that huge crystal ball? Two meters in diameter, 13 tons. That is crazy. A 13-ton crystal ball. Oh, my goodness. I was like, wow. It's like, yeah, you have to make your opportunity. And it's kind of like that, that, uh, that, that company that made that crystal ball. They made their opportunity by building a 17 a 13 ton crystal ball, which is, it's crazy, right? So we have to make our opportunities too. So don't just sit there waiting for something, build your ability and skills and make your opportunity, right? And, uh, you know, it's, it's just, there's so many things about opportunity this week. This is the week of opportunity. And um, when, you know, oh, remember that, the, what's the secret to uh, God answers this prayer the best or listen to this prayer the best, which is when you say, God, Holy Spirit, and the Lord, I will love you. I will love you forever, right? And this is where God, because his heart doesn't change, he's shocked and he loves and he'll respond right away to this. That's why, you know, we should all right now, like God, Holy Spirit, Holy Son, I will love you and I will love you forever. And then God will answer our hearts and say, oh, yes, of course, right? I think that's, that's powerful because then you get God's attention right away. Wow, yeah, what, what a great, great message. Of course, the greatest opportunity is meeting the Messiah. There's nothing greater than that because it brings salvation and the rapture. And many people will weep in the future when they realize they missed that opportunity, right? So everyone, this week, petition for opportunity. God will give it to us, but we need to work hard. So sometimes God, we need to work hard and God will give us something and we have to work hard and struggle. So then God has no choice but to give it to us. And I think that's, that's another powerful thing that we should look at also. Okay, awesome. Uh, oh, last thing. This is the one that I, I thought that was really powerful was uh, good opportunities happens to those who have raptured. Guys, that's us. The good opportunities are coming to us and we have to understand this really, really well. So don't kick it away. They're coming this week, everyone. It is coming. The opportunities will come. So we have to realize what this means, all right? So everyone, that is the word study for today. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. Lots of things to think about. I hope you guys will really enjoy more and more. Uh, so many things to think about. Please, everyone, have an amazing, amazing and awesome uh, 
time in this word. I hope you guys had an awesome time in this word study. And that means we will uh, uh, finish here and we'll go into the song of choice. Oh, you guys, if you guys have any other uh, other things that you like from the Sunday message, go ahead and write that in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys thought about the Sunday message too. Okay, so song of choice. We're going to go back to the Philippines and we're going to listen to these three guys. Daryl Ong, Sam Mangubat, and Kimo. And they have this, uh, this collab, no, yeah, collaboration and it's a mix. A song that has uh, from Lucas Graham. And it's got two songs of his, Seven Years and then Love Someone. So this is a cover from Daryl Ong, Sam Mangubat, and Kimo. And this is from, uh, they're all from the Philippines, great singers. So let's enjoy. <laughs> Seven years old, my mama told me Go make yourself some friends or you'll be lonely Once I was seven years old It was a big, big world But we thought we were bigger Pushing each other to the limits When we learning quicker By eleven, smoking urban Drinking burning liquor Never read, so we were out to make that steady figure Once I was 11 years old, my daddy told me Go get yourself a wife or you'll be lonely Once I was 11 years old oh. I always had that dream like my daddy before me So I started writing songs, I started writing stories Something about the glory just always seemed to bore me Cause only those I really love will ever really know me Soon I'll be 60 years old, my daddy got 61 Remember life and then your life becomes a better one I made a man so happy when I wrote a letter once I hope my children come and visit once or twice a month Soon yeah. I'll be 60 years old And I pinch myself You're with me, not someone else And I'm scared, yeah I'm so scared That it's all a dream Cause you still look perfect As days go by Even the worst ones You make me smile I'd stop the world if it gave us time Cause when you love someone You open up your heart When you love someone you may go If you love someone And you're not afraid to lose them you probably never loved someone like I you probably never loved someone like I do When you say, say You love the way I make you feel Everything becomes so real, yeah Don't be scared, no, don't be scared That it's all a dream Love 
there you go. That is Daryl Ong, Sam Mangubat, and Kimo. And these, those three are male vocalists from the Philippines. They are so amazing R&B vocalists. Uh, that's uh, two songs from Lucas Graham. The first one is Seven Years, and it switches to Love Someone. All right, guys. So let's get into the final thoughts uh, for today's Monday. Uh, just a couple of things that I've been thinking about, a couple of things that uh, have been in my mind uh, these last couple of days. And... It's really interesting because I do look at a lot of educational videos and leadership and all these other different things. Of course, listening to the word, seeing what connects with Sunseam word and stuff like that too. But uh, one thing you under one thing that's very interesting is, is when you start to listen to like super uber successful people, people at the very very top, there is one thing that you see that is very interesting is. Uh, they're relentless in their pursuit and they are so, uh, well, I don't know what the right word is. They are unstoppable. They're almost at a point that they're considered, I don't know about jerks, but they're considered kind of rude and kind of, yeah, they're kind of rude a bit, right? And people kind of look at them as a little bit angry or or whatever it is. But it's really interesting because when you look at all the people at the very, very, very top, it's interesting how, like in the regular medium world, you know, like you're not the super top, you're not the super bottom, but it's kind of like you have your time to work and then after that you rest and after you rest, you get back up and then, you know, you, you start doing, you know, your regular life, you have your vacation time, you get the weekends off. But here's the interesting thing. The reason why I, I started looking at these uh, successful people is these successful people are, are like Sun Tzu. And this is why we're so amazed by him, right? Because when you look at these super successful people, and the only reason we look at them as like, you know, like, oh my gosh, they're relentless, they're too strong, whatever it is, because they're at the very top. Like, work and rest are something that goes together. You work your way like crazy. You work the weekends. You work until, you know, until the sun comes down, right? And, and there's no stopping. And you're just constantly going. And what I realized is... When we look at ourselves, like just looking at the world of faith, like let's take a look at just, you know, there's a world of business, you see the top and the middle and the bottom, right? But you even look at the world of faith, it's, it's almost the exact same thing. When you're in the middle, you have your rest time, you have your time to go to service, you have your time to pray, then you rest and you do the things that you wanna do and you're very, very balanced, right? But the interesting thing is when you look at Sunstein, he's at the top of the totem pole. Like he's at the top of the totem pole when it comes to spirituality praying waking up at three and praying and then right from the break of dawn he's writing or he's going to work he's running he's working and he doesn't stop in like 10 11 12 p.m then takes a shower goes back to sleep sometimes doesn't sleep and we're like whoa that's so crazy but you have to think about him he's someone at the top isn't that true so it's not, it's not any different than someone in the successful world of business or the successful world of, of uh, like NGO, successful world of like um, bands or musical instruments, singers, whatever it is, they are non-stop. Actors, comedians, the people at the very, very top, and you look at everyone who's at the top of their craft, they are all the same. They are working like mad. And what I saw was there's no balance, like the, their balance of work is completely different than uh, someone in the middle. Because someone in the middle is going to be like, okay, you know, I've already worked for eight hours. I'm going to stop everything right now. And then I'm going to continue it tomorrow because my day at work is done. But you have the uber successful is they don't finish until they get it done. They stay at work. They stay, they sleep over at work. They keep going and going, going till it's done, Right. And then we look at that like, oh man, they're overdoing it. But it's really interesting. You're overdoing it only, if you can only overdo when you go to a level that's beyond you, right? So we're overdoing it when we reach, when we try to do exactly what Sunseam does, we're overdoing it because we're not at that level. So if you're not at that level, you're not going to be able to do it and you're going to overdo, you're going to burn out. But if Sunseam does it, then he's not burning out because that's his level. So they work like an animal, beast, just day in, day out. They can cash out. They get their freedom. They, they, they form these powerful teams and they're vicious competitors and they're at the top of the successful world when it comes to whatever it is. And it's interesting how different it is from the regular person, right? So when we look at ourselves, when we look at Sunstein, he is at the top. And when you look at it, it's relentless. And he'll, he'll, you know, he'll call people out during the message. Like, these people don't do it perfectly, and they don't do it perfectly like this, and they don't do it like this. And then Sunstein's like, oh, and he talks about this person, how they couldn't do it right. And we look at that one, you know, because he's Sunstein, and we're more, more like in a religious world, it's very hard for us to look at it in that way, right? 
But uh, on, the on the second side, we have to look at it as well. Imagine if someone was just doing the exact same thing like Sunstein, but in the business world, wouldn't it be very similar? Like calling out people, tell them they didn't do it perfectly. You know what I mean? That's what Sunstein says, you didn't do it perfectly. You gotta do it for the God, you gotta do it perfectly. Oh, now I gotta do all this by myself. Oh, if you're not gonna do it, don't do it at all. And that's like, that's what Sunstein says sometimes, right? But in the same way, because it's in a religious manner and the way that we look at him, we don't see it as a bad thing. But people on the outside can see that. And it's not any different than when you see this uber successful people in the business world, in, in the, the, the music world, in the singing world, in the, the craft of furniture or whatever it is. All these people in those worlds, they're, they're all very, very similar because that's their level. And we just can't understand it. And we think they're overdoing it. And we think it's, it's like, oh, that's kind of crazy. But in reality is it's not, not for them. It's just really interesting. When I was thinking about it, I was like, wow, it's really interesting because if we want to be able to be together with the Lord, you got to reach that level, right? It, it's crazy. So when we have to think about this and it's like, whoa, that's kind of, you know, like, are we, the, is the reason why we can't, you know, the reason why we can't be at his level is because we're not at his level, right? The reason why people will misunderstand because, because they don't understand his love. They don't understand his shimjong at that level. And that's now it begins to make more sense to me when Sunseem said that, um, uh, he says that uh, the people that understand me the best are CEOs and the uber successful because they've all gone through that crazy serious hardship, right? And because they've gone through that hardship, they're able to understand each other. And that one proverb, all of them, because they've been through it, they're going to understand, right? When we think about this, it's really interesting because we're like, oh, that's so true. Because we would think to ourselves that, oh, it's the, the people of faith that would understand something. And the answer is no, it's the people at that level of success. They under, understand each other that level. And if we want to get to that level, if we want to live together, like say live in the same house, live together, whether it's Pastor Jolin, whether it's like these, these really big people, we have to realize, oh my goodness, we need to, in, in order to, for you to live and be okay living at that level is you have to be at that level. How many people can actually live with Sunsnim and be able to uh, like hang out with him and work with him every day? Exactly what he does, only the people that are really at that level. And I, I think it's something that we have to kind of recalibrate the way that we think because in the end, it's not about being comfortable. When I was listening to this one really, really successful rich dude, and he basically said, hey, you work like crazy until you can cash out and you gain your freedom and you can do the things that you want. But until that time, you can't do anything, right? You have no freedom in the, in the sense of like, say the financial world, unless you do that. And what we have to realize, it's the same thing is, it's not about being comfortable right now, it's actually about being comfortable later on. And that's what kind of drives people to live that way is, hey, we gotta eventually be those people that live comfortably later more than right now, because living comfortably now means that you're gonna be uncomfortable later. Right? It's kind of like having savings and no savings, right? So I hope, you know, that's one thing that was in my mind today. There's something else, but I'll talk about that tomorrow. But that's something like, oh, wow, this, the level makes a big difference. And only the people that are not at that level will misunderstand that person, right? And I hope that we can be those that can understand the people when it comes to faith, that level too, when it comes to Pastor Joel and Sunsea, stuff like that too, right? So that was the thing on my mind. So I hope that uh, you guys really enjoyed that. That is the end of my thoughts for uh, today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this Monday podcast. Everyone have an amazing and awesome Monday. Enjoy it while you can. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys again tomorrow on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. It's the morning star drive on 17.8 You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind I'm burning with desire and the passion Nobody can stop me when I'm like this I got my head in the zone, you know